Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis, verses, chapter 29, verses 15 through 28. Laban said to Jacob, because you are my kinsman, should you <clears throat> therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your da younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of his love for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, give me to my wife that I may go into her for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, this is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed his week. Then Laban gave him his daughter, Rachel as a wife. 
The word of the Lord. The psalm this morning is Psalm 105, found in your leaflet. We'll read responsively by half verse. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Glory is his holy name. Search for the Lord and his strength. Remember the marvels he has done. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, he is the Lord our God. His justice prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath that he swore to Isaac, which he established as a statute for Jacob. saying to you, I will give the land of Canaan to be your allotted inheritance. Hallelujah. from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us. Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress, or persecution or famine, or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. These are such good readings today. They're, you know, usually I circle, a, you know, underline a sentence or circle a word, which is kind of the focus of what I want to talk about. It's a mess. <laughs> there is so much here. Uh, first of all, Genesis. Now, we all know families can be dysfunctional, right? <laughs> but this one takes the cake. I wouldn't trust Laban as far as I could throw him. And yet, here we are feeling bad for Jacob. Jacob was the one who threw his twin brother under the bus to get the family inheritance. You know, what goes around comes around. And yet, in spite of the embarrassing level of broken human nature that we get again and again in these core families of the Old Testament, God kept and is keeping the promise that he made all those many millennia ago. You know, at one point, and it's still somewhat present in Christianity, is this um, false belief that we Christians are saved, but the Jews are not. They blew it, they didn't believe in Jesus, they're out of here. And both my theology professor and my Old Testament professors in seminary were very, very clear that when God makes a promise, God keeps that promise. God never takes the promise back. And so the Jewish people are God's special people. And God's promises made to them down through the millennia are still promises that God has bound himself to and will keep. OK, that takes care of Genesis now. <laughs> I love this passage from Romans. This, I mean, probably when I die, this is gonna be the passage to be read at my funeral. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. 
in Christ Jesus our Lord. So two things that are important that Paul addresses before he gets to that section of this letter. Over the years, I can't tell you how many people have said to me, I don't know how to pray. Teach me to pray. Tell me how to pray. And there's a great deal of comfort in this passage because what we are being assured of is the Holy Spirit of God within us is already and constantly, day and night, praying for us, praying for God's will to be manifested and brought forth in our lives. It's important that we make the effort to pray and to listen for what God might be telling us, how God might be guiding us in our lives. But we can take great comfort from knowing that however short we fall in our ability or faithfulness about praying, God, through the Holy Spirit, is praying within us every second day and night for God's perfect will to be done in our lives. So praying is basically pour out your heart to God. Whatever is there that you're carrying, just put it out there. And it's nice when you remember to just be still and become aware of God's love for you and presence with you. And Maybe a thought or a scripture passage or a line from a hymn will come into your mind that, by golly, somehow seems to apply to whatever it is that's on your heart at that moment. And that's God pouring out God's heart to you. Okay? So that's prayer. Next up, you're getting like five sermonettes today, <laughs> I think. Um, this thing about predestination. Back in the Reformation, a man by the name of Calvin took this passage from Romans, combined it with a passage from Revelation about the 144,000, and decided that there were only 144 thousand people who were going to make it into heaven and not just out of everyone who's ever existed on the face of the earth Calvin was talking about Christians and that is so theologically bad <laughs> so for me uh, I remember one Sunday years ago we had this passage from Matthew the kingdom of heaven is like yeast, yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Any bread bakers? Anybody who took up sourdough during, during the 2020? It takes a minuscule, you don't even have to put as much yeast in as the recipe calls for if you're a patient person, any amount of yeast in the dough and you just be patient and eventually that dough will have risen and overflowed the bowl and be making a mess on your countertop because that's the nature of yeast and so my question is if the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that leavens the whole dough none of it is none of it remains unleavened None of it remains untransformed by the presence of the yeast. If God has predestined for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Who did God not foreknow? The psalmist says, you knew me while I was still in my mother's womb. There is no one who has ever walked the face of the earth, no one today whom God does not foreknow, even before their birth, who God does not know deeply and intimately. And Paul says that every one of us is predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. We are all, and the Orthodox continue to teach this, it's been taught from the beginning of the church, 
We are all being transformed by the love of God and the work of the Holy Spirit within us to ever more fully be perfect reflections. We were created in the image and likeness of God and our redemption is about the transformation and restoration of that brokenness of the image of God that we carry within us. We have all been predestined to be conformed to the image and likeness of the Son of God. He goes on to say that those whom he called he also justified through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross and those whom he justified he also glorified through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He who did not withhold his own son but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. God is judge and jury. And Jesus is the defending attorney. We don't have anything to worry about. Except there's that thing about the good fish and the bad fish, and the bad fish being thrown into the fire where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Can't ignore that. What do we do with it? So who are the fishermen here? Oh, come on. There's a river back there. Don't any of you fish? No one? Oh, this is so sad. Well. <laughs> We spent one summer uh, renting a cottage on uh, a lake in Vermont to be near my, where my father was working that summer. And, uh, and my, my father liked to fish, nothing fancy. We were the worms on hooks people, you know, no fly fishing. And we'd row out in the rowboat and, and uh, you know, throw our lines in. I can't tell you how many sunfish we caught that summer. Some fish are beautiful, but they're terrible eating. They're all bones. And so when I read about good fish and bad fish, well, I mean, you're not going to be poisoned by any fish you eat. So what's a bad fish? Bad fish has got a lot of bones that get stuck in your throat, right? So fish is fish. We think of fire as being destructive. But there's another use for fire, and that use is purification. When you take gold ore, the way they get all of the gold out of the ore, even the, just the little microscopic flecks of it, is they basically burn it. And the gold will remain, and the dross will be destroyed. In another letter of Paul's, he talks about how our life in Christ is built upon the foundation of our trust in Jesus Christ and what he has done for us, that we have already received eternal life through what Christ did on the cross and through his resurrection. But Paul says, be careful how you build on that foundation. He says, for people who choose to build with straw and wood, when the day comes, they will find that what they have built in their lives is burned up. And their life will be preserved, but they will be like someone whose home has been destroyed in a fire. They have escaped with their life, but they've lost everything else. He said, build with gold and precious stones so that on that day, when your work is revealed, it will last. So this circles back around to that orthodox teaching about the transformation of our lives, how we are being reformed, reshaped, recreated even, if you will, to be reflective of who we truly are as children of God in the image of Jesus Christ. So, you can't get too literal with this stuff, with throwing bony fish into the fire. Because <laughs> then you end up in the same problem that Calvin had. 
but it is helpful to think about fire as purification, not as destruction. Because throughout scripture, what is clear is that when God makes a promise, it is forever. And so when we have been promised eternal life through Jesus Christ, that we is not just those of us sitting here this morning. It's everyone throughout all the ages. Because God who loved us, all of us, loved us so much that he did not withhold even his only son. But like the man who found treasure in a field, like the merchant who discovered the pearl of great price, God gave everything, everything, that we might be redeemed and made whole and restored to be who we truly are, created in the image and likeness of the living God. Thanks be to God. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God
Carolyn Miskelvin family, the family of Marsha Alpers, Bass and Mona Bass, John Irwin, Jim Lamontia and family, Lou Boswell, Henry S., Margie, Jim and Kathy Pender, Kimberly, Mary, and Loretta. Liz Russo, Bill McGann, Brian Collins, Fran Myers, Jean Ramsey and family, Alexis, Tracy, Marilyn Fisher, Ramon and Jane Battles, Kitty Thomas, Kathy, and the Stonefield and Bixler families. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For darling Councilman's visit today. We will exalt you, O God our King. And the praise your name forever and ever. We pray for Donald Stonefell, Laura and Ed Cole. Doug and Harvey Schluter, Pam Kuchenmuller, and all who have died, and they, that they may be, they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who will they trust you? We praise you, all the saints of the forgiveness of our sins. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You are still ours, and we're so glad that you're here with us this morning. Um, so, first of all, good news. Joyce Saeed is home from rehab. There are five-star uh, rehab centers, and Joyce was in a one-star. 
So I am really happy that she's home. And I have to say, Joyce being Joyce was God's light for the whole time she was there. And she handled a difficult and challenging um, place to be really beautifully. But um, so Thanksgivings that Joyce is home again. And, uh, and if you want to send her a card or a note, it can go right to home and, and she'll get it there. Information or announcements you need to share with each other this morning. Um, all right. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to let everyone know we've been talking and talking about by the footpath, by the bridge, and our hopes to fix all the landscaping there. And it is three fourths finished. It's finished except for planting, which we'll deal with in the fall. But um, take a walk back. And Enjoy the river and the new landscape. It looks beautiful. And with all of the just torrential rain that we've had within the past week, nothing moved. <laughs> I walked up and down the steps. I checked it all out. They did a beautiful, beautiful job and, uh, and really look forward to then when we have some plants and flowers in there, it'll be really, really nice. Anything else this morning? Don't forget that Tuesday at 4 will be our first um, Knitting for Love group. Um, whether you want to knit prayer shawls or hats or mittens, socks, whatever, 4 o'clock in the Guild Room, the first Tuesday of every month. So starting this Tuesday at 4, uh, if you have knitting needles and yarn, bring them along. It, and if you don't, somebody will have extra, I'm sure. Do we have, um yeah, thank you. Knitting or crochet, both. Yeah, yeah. So feel, feel free to, to bring what you have. Um, birthdays or anniversaries. Okay, a reminder that on Tuesday, August 1st, it is Sal and Helen Cicerello's 75th wedding anniversary. Wow. I'm like, I can't even go there. <laughs> um, and uh, so if you are sending, if you're sending them a card, get it in the mail. There are not a lot of happy 75th wedding anniversary cards out there. I looked. So, you know, just congratulations or a pretty card that's blank on the inside, however you want to make that happen. Their daughters are pulling them out of the mail as they arrive so that they can receive all of them at once on their anniversary. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I'm very happy to say that Helen and Sal still have their sense of humor. And that may be a key to 75 years of marriage. <laughs> so anyway, I, if, you, if you've already put a card in the mail to them, yay, that's wonderful. And if you want to, get it in the mail quick. Yes. Excuse me, I have to tell you in regards to Helen and Sal, um, I sat with Helen um, last week one day when um, uh, Sal had an appointment, mm -hmm. and she and I watched TV. She said, open up the cabinet. Well, they have two remotes, and <clears throat> both of us, neither one of us could figure out what to change. <laughs> the Who can figure the out a remote, Fran? <laughs> And she got a call from one of their foreign exchange students from uh, New Zealand. Oh, wonderful. And uh, it was 3 o'clock in the morning there. And wow. I guess she said she couldn't sleep, so oh. she called and <laughs> to talk to her. So yeah. it was nice. It was a nice. I enjoyed doing that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, they're great. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Our worship continues this morning on page 369. Page 369. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to you and thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. <laughs> And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Using the prayer on page 366, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.